What is profanity? We compromise the word and we live in a place that we get comfortable in and that's not going to bring revival. That is not going to bring the wave. And you'll see pockets of a place that's around the body of Christ, around churches, and it's because people are willing to pay that price and you see something happen there. If we get enough people, there'll be a spark and then it'll become a fire. Ezekiel 44 verse 23 says this, And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between unclean and clean. See, we need spiritual discernment in our lives. And a lot of times we go around just doing the stuff, but we don't truly understand why we do it. And we don't really understand what the Spirit of God is saying in situations. And it's up to us to really study into his character and his word to actually learn to understand getting spiritual discernment in situations and over people's lives and those we come in contact with to make a difference. We look at what's happening in Australia and we may come concerned with it. We may come complacent with it. And we should be concerned The countries will cry out for revival. I hear it all the time. But it may not come like we expect revival to come. It may not just be a pleasant outpouring in the church. It may come through persecution. It may come through things that are happening in this generation and in this country that we're losing the ethical and moral stance of God. But God is on the throne and God's sovereign and he will bring his word to pass. And if you look at anywhere throughout the Old Testament, out through the Bible, you see that there is times that, that revival has happened and repentance and, the, and, and people have been put back into order because God gave them a warning. God came through and said, this will happen if you do not repent. And they gave them a chance to repent, the Israelites, and they'd come back into submission with God and things would be restored. Then you'd see they'd go along like every human and we'd fall again and we're away. Then it would go through the same process. But I'm telling you today that we don't have to continue that same process because now we have the Holy Spirit living within us and we can just go like this. Living from the Spirit, discerning from the Spirit, getting transformed minds. I think sometimes we get too comfortable and we rest. And what we do is we put his commandments before his commission. And that's what we should do. Put our commandments before a commission instead of the commission before the commandment. You want to go out there and help people get saved and help people in the community, but you go out without love your neighbor and love God. And then you wonder why there's no power in what you're saying to your family or your friends or anything because you haven't weeped for them and haven't cried for them and we haven't got into that place of loving God so intimately that it permeates through us. No matter who we touch, it cannot be nothing but revival. When we live in a horizontal plane instead of vertical plane, we lose discernment of the spirit and we tend to live in a natural realm. The church... Worldwide has got a long way to go because we're continually living in a horizontal living where we become deaf to the things of the spirit and not experience corporal, uh, corporate anointings and corporate things that are happening. You remember in Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 7, God brought about revival involuntary revival through persecution, through the death of Stephen. They were getting comfortable. They had the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Come on. We saw 3,000 and 5,000. We see people healed and everything. So now let's just go kumbaya and get around our meetings and enjoy life. It's great. But we forgot our commission. And I think they forgot their love. So God put persecution into the church, which kicked them out into the highways and the byways. And I think we need to be as a church here that are praying for our nation and ensuring that when the decision comes for the election, 
that we go on to like the Australian Christian Lobby site, acl.org or whatever it is, and other sites, and have a good look at all sides. Because there is some skullduggery going on. And for us to make a right decision in who we feel that God wants on the platform. Not because I've always voted Labor. I remember when I was young, mum voted Labor, so I vote Labor. It was easy. It's just like a donkey vote. But it's time that we rise and really do some research because I think we're going to be accountable for it. We have Victor Hill. Just stand up, Victor. Victor now is becoming the activist for the church, a church activist, like a lobbyist. So if there's things that are happening, it goes in him. He'll send letters off and he'll speak on behalf of us as a group. But we need to do it individually as well. Get on this great and crispy Christian lobby website. There are so many things that are going through Parliament. And they said, we don't want you to fight. We just want to hear from you. That's all. And we'll do the fighting. This church, this New Testament church, was living in a place where they were getting complacent. And the Lord brought this persecution through. And throughout the world we see persecution. Where, where persecution is in the China and the other places that are around. You see the church is rising. God help Australia if we have to get to that place to see revival. When we can get in now and go for it. We can't compromise. We need transformation. We need spiritual discernment. This is the last time, this is the end time, and we're the anchor. We're the fastest runner. We've been at the back of the relay. We've got to go for it. God's commissioned us to be a voice on this earth. No compromise. Go for Christian justice, not so much social justice. Social justice is good, but so much people are sold out for social justice and because of the humanistic side of things in it. We have to be careful of that. We compromise without true spiritual discernment. People are getting confused in what to stand for and what to stand in. We get confused and have mixed flesh. Mixed flesh in our own lives. You know, Ezekiel says, so you must teach the difference between what is holy and profane. Do you know what profane means? Profane means it's simple, showing disrespect or contempt to sacred things. 